Hey everybody, it's Stacey, Stacey Wells Artistry. I hope y'all are having a wonderful Wednesday. And um, today I was gonna finish up this series that I've been doing on the stained glass and talk about framing um, your stained glass piece and just some kind of finishing touches stuff. And um, I'm so excited. If you look right over here, you'll see when I can get it on there. My latest gadget, it is a, uh, well, they call it a chop saw. Uh, it's, a, it's a metal cutting saw, and uh, you use it to cut this zinc uh, framing material that we use. And um, I've tried a whole bunch of other things to cut that stuff without having to purchase something, but this thing was $50 off Amazon totally worth it absolutely worth it. it cuts this stuff like butter i'll show you uh i tried cutting with cutting uh implements like my drill and different attachments my dremel and different attachments i spent probably 50 bucks on those things and they never work um this is excellent if you're thinking about doing this it's another purchase that i would definitely recommend um it's really cool um it's got a vise that will attach to this part this base and attach that to your table, but I haven't needed to use that because it's got this little vise right here. See this little knob? I don't know if y'all can see good in there, but see so you unscrew this and you stick your cane in that little trough right there. See, it goes right there, and this is the saw blade right here. So, you can, you, this is a vise too, so you can tighten it up and it holds the cane steady while you lower the blade on it. Um, I'll show you how we do that um, in just a minute. I'm going to move this camera first though because I want y'all to be able to see that really good uh, when we do that. Now, um, this is the piece that we've been working on. Um, and we started with the pattern and we've gone all the way now through soldering last time it's soldered on both sides it has not been cleaned up or anything i wiped it down when you get done soldering you need to wipe the flux off with just some water and a rag um, don't let a piece sit up with the flux on there it can cause corrosion or something bad so don't do that but i haven't cleaned it real good i just wiped it down but there's little bits of solder on here those just pop off you know um, but what I do, I'll just go ahead and talk about it right now. Once I get mine framed, I usually patina everything, most everything, because I like the look of the darker. Patina is a chemical that you put on your solder lines and on your framing material, and it changes the color of it. Um, the most common one changes it to a black or a, you know, sort of a deep gray, like a gunmetal way um but there's other ones there's copper which i've tried and never could get to work um and there's other colors but um that's the only one that i'm really um that i use very often um i think it makes it have kind of a vintage look to it i like the color i like the way it looks it also hides imperfections in your soldering i mean i'll just go ahead and say it it's the truth it does um and so i like that um but I think it mutes the solder some because I don't know about you, but to me, I want the glass to stand out, not the solder lines. And to me, when they're this color, they just kind of scream at you. And when you put the um, patina on there and change the color, it mutes that. And I think it's better. Um, but it's totally personal preference. But if you want to do that, um, it depends on also how you want to put your hooks on and all of that kind of thing. Uh, what I've been doing lately is a new thing. I've been using these little handy hangers right here. Uh, that's what they're called. I got them off Amazon. They're kind of pricey. Um, but they make a real neat look. I'll show you this piece that I just finished. Um, I had been using before um, different ways of doing that. Um, and I won't go into it because I think this works better. All right, but look at this piece. Okay, um, now if you look at the top, see right there? See that little hook? 
very hard for me to get this where y'all can see. There's one. See the hook? Um, that's a handy hanger. And what they do is you need to, when you're putting your cane on, your lead cane, that's what this outer, you know, this framing material is. It's lead cane. I mean, zinc cane, excuse me. Um, you need to um, cut it and arrange it so that these vertical pieces here are going to be open at the top which is why I needed something that would cut that zinc exactly straight because all the other cutting implements mangle the ends of it, they bend it, and it closes that channel that runs in between the, the zinc. There's a channel that runs along, see that? Uh, right there. See that channel that runs along the inside of the zinc? Well, that's so the zinc can fit up against the glass. And uh, that's how it goes on. See, it has that opening and that's where it fits onto your glass like this okay um if you're going to use those hangers what you need to do is be sure that you cut your zinc to where the side pieces these vertical pieces are um going to be open in other words this this top piece here will fit in between them it won't overlap the tops of them because you need those channels to be open because that's where you stick your little handy hanger is down in that groove and you do that by I think that turned out real pretty what do y'all think I like it I think it turned out really neat um you do that by um you take the little hanger here's what they look like well let me get, try to get where y'all can see there is what they look like kind of like a little key old thing and you're going to uh, flux it, get your flux that you put on before you solder. You're going to flux that whole thing real good. And then you're going to flux down in this channel when you get ready to. And then we'll just drip the solder down in there and cover that, you know, that opening. But we'll go into that in more detail when we do it. I'll get us a couple of these hangers out. Um, there's a bunch of these knockoffs. Uh, on the market. I have not tried them very much Except I did order some and they were a whole lot cheaper. You got a whole bunch of them But what I found was uh, on that particular brand This width was too great and it wouldn't fit down in the channel Now you could still use that and you could place it Like this on top of the zinc and solder over it but that was just going to make a mess, I thought. So, I, didn't, I don't do that. Um, this is the best way I know to do it. Um, I, like I said, I've done it a lot of different ways. But this is my favorite way right now. Um, but it does, like I said, it does, you, you just, as far as my experience has shown, you have to have a saw. Um, because uh, cutting this stuff with those lead dikes is going to mangle the end of it. Cutting it with my Dremel did the same thing. Cutting it with my... Um, drill with a big attachment, a cutting metal cutting attachment, also mangled it. Um, so, and it's really hard and cumbersome to work with. Um, so, I think the saw is well worth it. Like I said, it's only just around 50 bucks, less than 50 bucks, or right around 50 bucks on Amazon. And uh, it's a, a mini cutoff saw, is what they call it. And um, it works really well. If you want more information about that or to talk about that or something, as as I always say in my videos, and a, a nice lady has contacted me uh, yesterday and we've been chatting. And so I, I want to tell y'all that if you want to talk further about any of this, um, please don't hesitate to email me and then I'll give you my phone number and we can chat, you know, because at, at some point there's no substitute for just a regular old conversation with somebody about hey, this is what's happening, this is what I'm doing, this is what's going wrong, this is what's going right, whatever. Um, and I'm totally at your, um, uh, I'm totally um, available, you know, um, to talk and try to help any way I can. Um, now, okay, I have heated up my soldering iron because you're going to need that to solder the corners of that. And also, I noticed right here, there's kind of a blob of solder right there. I'm going to have to, like, you know, try to thin that down a little bit. I'll tell you another little trick just while we're at it. If you have a big hump or a blob or something on the edge over there and you can't get it to smooth out so that this will fit around the glass, 
you can get your pliers and insert them into this opening and you can kind of bend it out just a little bit in that place and it won't be noticeable. Um, you shouldn't have to do that, but I'm going to tell you all the little tricks that I do when I screw up because I screw up. We all do and when you do that, there's no reason to trash everything. You know, there are some little ways you can kind of get around certain things that, um, you know, that might uh, happen. And if I know those things, I'm going to share them with you because um, that's what I do. Um, hang on, i got to wet this sponge here. I forgot. Um, for our soldering iron. Um, okay. Uh, so I've got my solder here, and I've got my flux brush, and I've got my flux, and um, I've got my sharpie because you're going to need that to um to uh label the zinc where you want it to be cut all right so what we're going to do is take our zinc and i don't know what the dimensions are on this particular size they come in different sizes obviously um but for a piece of size i go with something kind of small um that you know if you go with a bigger something bigger you're going to need obviously more support and a bigger piece of um, zinc. But, um, like I said, that's probably one of those sort of individual, you know, chat kind of conversations. Um, I'm just, uh, right now, just getting this. If you don't know how to do this, if you have a blob or something on the edge, just take your solder and iron, run it along the edge, and it'll just drip off, generally. Um, and uh, that's what I'm doing, is just trying to de-blob everything. Actually, I need to add a little bit right here. And I did not flux that, I just blobbed it on there. Okay, um, I see a little bit right here we need to kind of smooth over. There's, it, with this particular piece, there's it's a little problematic because there's these points and where that comes together and you want uh, there, there to be closure there, but you don't want to be blob of solder and it's kind of hard to, to do. All right, so I'm gonna turn it back around and um, in fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I said I was gonna do, or that you can do. I'm gonna just open this channel a little bit because I've got some little blobs and I don't wanna to have to go through and fix it. This one, this piece got bent in my car. I'll try to straighten it out. It's a little bit bent, but I'm not gonna throw it away because this stuff's expensive. All right, so I, it doesn't matter where you start, just that, you know, if you start on one of these edges on the sides, these vertical sides, um, you want to position it so that you can draw your line and you're gonna want a little bit of it to overhang this top because you're gonna put another piece along here and it's gonna sink over this glass to some degree, but not completely. So you want a little bit of this uh, zinc here to stick out, okay? And then you get your sharpie and you mark it where this end is doing the same thing, as close as you can get, all right. We're just going to do one leg at a time, so, um, and then I'll get my hammer and kind of hammer that on there, but first we got to cut it. Now, wear your glasses when you're doing this. i got to give you the safety precautions, but you should wear your glasses. It does have a little guard right here that covers the blade, and it has a safety lever right here. Can y'all see? Um, it has a safety lever right here that won't allow the this to go all the way down. Um, unless, uh, you know, it's ready. So, um, I'll tell you what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to move the saw up here because we got to line this up. All right. I hope y'all can see good. I can't tell. You may have to zoom. I don't know. All right. So I showed you how this fits in that little groove. And if you get one and you, and this is kind of a do it and you figure it out thing. I didn't really read the instructions because I don't do that very much. I read instructions when I get in trouble. Um, 
So I just kind of, uh, you know, trial and error this. But you tighten this vise up. That holds that firmly in place right there, see? So you don't have to worry about it. Now the saw blade's gonna come down a little bit to the right, so you gotta kinda play around with that. Um, now it's plugged in, so we're gonna turn it on and I'll show you how it goes. It's not real loud, but it's a little loud. Okay, and you push this button in and that lowers the handle. And you push it very slowly. Safety first. Okay, now you can take your remnant out. And here's our piece that we cut. See that edge? Perfect. Can you see that? It's perfect. There's no jaggedy edges, nothing sticking out. Looks good. Okay, so we're gonna, that's where that one's gonna go and I'll just look at it and kinda see. I probably could've left a little bit more overhang there. We'll see how it works. Um, sometimes, you know, I do a lot of this by eyeballing the distance. I, you can measure all of that. You can figure how much, you know, how wide your zinc is and how much you're going to need. And you can actually, a trick when you're first getting started is, um, if you have a little piece, uh, cut yourself a little piece of the, of the zinc, a little clay piece, something you're going to use. And what you can do is, when you are measuring, you put this one up here, and this is going to be my play piece, okay? And you can put it up here to kind of give yourself an idea of how far down that's going to sink. Okay? Because, see, I've cut that too short. I think. Yeah. I just got completely carried away. We're going to cut that again. Um, I'll use that as my, as my guide. Um, I'll show you. I, I, so I don't use one very often anymore, and I probably should because I just screwed that up. But anyway, we're going to measure it again. Take your guide, put it up here, and kind of smush it down. You don't have to make it fit all the way, but just get an idea of how far in it's going to sink on the glass. That will tell you where you need to cut this. Okay, so we need that much extended. And then we need... We'll do it down here. And so you can see where these line up, and that's where you want to draw your line. And that way, you you won't make the mistake I just made. Because I've gotten out of the habit of doing that, and I need to do it. Because if, if the zinc is too long, too long, of course, you can cut it. If it's too short, you know, if it's way too short, you won't be able to use it. Um, that piece I probably still could have used, but I'm just going to, you know, just for kicks and grins, we're going to do it right. All right, let's cut this again. Um, so I've got this lined up in my vise where I see my red line. I'm going to tighten the vise down. Turn it on. it out and then we have our piece all right now this one's kind of bent like I said because it got squished in my car but um, that's that now we're gonna do the other side uh, same way we're gonna take it and put it up there where you think it might and it probably goes get your guide Put your guide Move that. Okay, put your guide up there. Okay, and then you see how far to extend your uh, lateral piece. Move it up. 
Okay, then we got that part. Hold it still. Go down here to the bottom. Put your guide on. Hey, baby. Yeah. All right, we're gonna. Get an idea of where that's going to fit and draw my line. Okay, now. I had two lines drawn there and it was confusing me. Okay, we'll cut this again. See how easy this thing is? It's wonderful. And I banged myself against the wall trying to get this done so many other ways. Just spend the 50 bucks. I mean, really. All right. Okay. Now we got this one cut. Okay, and it's the right length. All right. Um, now, um, okay, so these, these two sides, we're gonna leave the ends of them open because that's where our little handy hanger thing is gonna fit down in. I'll show you. It's gonna fit down in this groove like that. Okay, so you flux it, you stick it in there, and then you solder around it. All right, now we gotta cut these these bottom pieces. Now these bottom these uh, these horizontal pieces are gonna need to fit in between the vertical pieces. Okay, so it squares up, uh, and you'll see it'll make more sense when I show you after it's done. So I'm gonna sort of place these on here. They don't have to be you know, put all the way on or perfect or anything, but get an idea of um, where we need to cut the end of this one here. All right, and we got that. And I put it in my machine. Down. And you have to kind of play with it to get used to where that, where your line is in relation to where the saw blade is going to hit. Because for instance, I've got, I need to move it over a little bit. You just kind of have to play with that, I realize. Now you might say, well, when I've done one of these, the vertical one, why can't I just use this to measure the other one um, and not go through all that? Well, I'll tell you why. Because you will not know, you will not believe how many times um, when you're doing that that way that one side will for some reason be a little bit off and different than the other one. It won't be noticeable, but it'll be off enough that that doesn't work. So, um, I mean, it, it can work sometimes, but I wouldn't get in the habit of doing it. I measure each side individually to account for human error because this human errors. And, um, you know, I want to be sure that I'm, um, you know, doing the right. Okay, now we'll measure how much of this cut off. Cut this one off and we're well on our way. See, now there's another line on there. I gotta look and be sure I'm looking at the right line. Because that's really frustrating if you cut looking at one line and you realize that um, that's not the line you should have been looking at. Very irritating. I try not to have more lines on there than the ones I'm using, but.
Okay. Now we got. Did I cut it the wrong line? I did. Uh, I tell you what, I can't learn for losing today. Unless this is my piece. There's my piece. I got it. All right, now we're done with our cutting. Put that over there. Um, now I'll tell you what. We're gonna take a break and come back because I talked a lot about the saw and all of that, and I've taken a lot of time, and I don't want this to go too long or cut me off or whatever. Uh, we're going to take a break right now. When we come back, we're going to solder these together and put our handy hangers in. And we're going to talk about um, how to um, finish your piece as in cleaning it and polishing it and uh, what to use. Um, actually, and I'll show you. Um, this is one of the things I use um, to polish it. Um, I have another kind. I, I got that on Amazon or maybe at Glass Castles. It's just a, uh, uh, it's almost, it does like a wax does on your car. So you put it on and you rub it in and you let it dry. And then I actually use a car buffer um, after that. And I buff it um, with just a handheld car buffer thing. I bought one. And they're cheap, and uh, you just have to replace the little coverings on them ever so often because this pulls and tears and, you know, makes a mess. But it makes them look really shiny and really pretty. And then when I get done with that, um, so you patina, you put your patina on, then you wipe that off with just some water. Then you put on your uh, bu buffing solution, wax, whatever, you know, shine stuff, whatever you want to call it. Put that on, rub it in, let it dry, buff it, and then I get a thin rag and I run my fingers along all the cracks in all the edges around all the glass and get rid of any other little marks. Um, I will tell you, just so you know, um, see this is why I have to cut things into two videos because I get off on tangents, but I want you to understand, and it doesn't apply to what we're going to be doing because we're going to put these handy hangers down in that crevice. But I don't ever patina until after I get my hangers on. Because there's something in that patina that resists solder. And like the way I used to do them is I would put a hook on the outside. And so if I did my patina first and then tried to solder the hooks on, they wouldn't stick. And it was a major problem because they would just fall off. Um, so if you are going to put hooks or any, if you're going to do anything that requires soldering, um, be sure that you do not do your patina uh, before that. Do it after. Okay, clear as mud. All right, we're going to take a break right now. We'll come back and continue this in just a few minutes. Thank y'all for joining me. And if you're just tuning in, um, catch the, uh, uh, the previous.